So here on my breadboard, I have the circuit for lab four of EET 1015C, that's Fundamentals of DC Circuits. This is the parallel circuit for lab four. So the way that I have this set up is I first have my resistors here. This is the 3.3K, 2.7K, the 4.7K, and the 5.6K. Notice that they are in parallel here and they are connected across the top here, and they are connected to ground here. In order to make sure that you have your circuit truly set up in parallel, make sure that you can follow the path of current. Current is going to leave the red probe from your power supply and come to the vertical bus right here. Current is then going to be transferred from the bus to this resistor here. But notice this makes a node. So current is going to split, some current will go through this resistor and some current will go this way. That current again splits, some goes through R2 while the rest goes this way. The current splits again, some goes through R3 while some goes through R4. And all four currents recombine right here at our connection to ground. That completes our circuit. So this is a parallel circuit and we're going to measure the current through each branch. So right now my circuit board is off. Again, take a minute to look at how everything is wired. When you're creating your circuit, it should be wired pretty similarly to this. And again, to make sure that you know that it's wired correctly, always follow the path of current. Make sure there's a connection from the power supply to the vertical bus. Make sure there's a connection from the bus to the resistors that should be receiving, receiving power. Now, I use these wires right here to cause the current to split. These resistors could have been tied directly up here as well. That was another way you could have done it so that current would split between all four of these. So we have four paths and we're going to start by first setting your, your power supply. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn this all the way down to zero and I'm going to turn on the multimeter to measure volts. The first thing I'm going to do with this at zero is measure the voltage that the power supply is sending. So, 1.25 volts is what I'm getting right now, even with this knob turned all the way down to a little below one. That's why we can't just turn the knob. We have to actually measure the voltage coming out of here before we supply any voltage to our circuit. So don't just turn the knob and assume that your voltage is going to be what's on here. These are not very accurate. So you're going to set up your probes so that you can measure what's coming out and slowly turn the knob until you get close to the voltage level you want. In this case, we want 12 volts. So I'm going to make sure that this is set to 12. Get as close as you can. So I'll stop right there at about 11.98 volts. Now that my voltage supply is set, look again at where this knob is. 12 should really be over here, but what, where did I actually get 12 from? Right here. So you have to measure this before you start to make sure you're supplying the correct voltage for the report. This particular lab says you need 12 volts, so you have to measure it from there and make sure that you're actually getting your 12 volts. So once again, there's my 12 volts by setting the knob. Now that that's set, I'm going to measure the current through each resistor. In order to do that, you're going to want to have an extra little jumper wire with you. I'm also going to change the multimeter from volts to current. Now, we have various levels that you can select for measuring current. You have to look at the range of what you're trying to measure because if this knob is set too high or too low compared to what you're trying to measure, you're not going to see any results on this screen. So let's start with R1. Now here's what you're going to do. You're going to break the circuit by removing this resistor from its place. Pull it out. Put a jumper wire in the exact same spot where that resistor was. Connect the red to the jumper wire. Connect the black to the resistor. There's your measurement. 3.6 and because the knob is currently pointing to 200 M it's going to measure up to 200 milliamps. So that right there is a unit of milliamps, 3.6 milliamps. 
Now here's what I mean by if this is not set correctly, you're not going to see a measurement. I'm going to put that on 10 amps. No measurement. Why am I getting no measurement? Because the actual amount of current in this circuit right now is very, very, very small. And this knob is set to a range that's very, very, very large. What's running through the multimeter right now is so small, it can't even pick it up because of the range. Once again, you can also have the range too, uh, too small. So this range right here is now 200 microamps. And what you're going to see here is a 1. If you get a 1... That means what it's trying to measure is too big for the range. You have to increase the range. So if you are seeing a 1, that means your knob is not in the right place to measure that value. Now I can put it at 20 milliamps, and that's fine because I'm measuring a little less than 20 milliamps. I'm getting about 3.69. So that's a, a good range. This range, which was the first one I used, will also work. So if you're not seeing a current, it might be because you don't have the correct range set on your um, multimeter. But that's how we're going to measure current. When you're done, you have to put the circuit back the way it was before you measure anything else. It has to go back to where you started from. So I'm going to put R1 back in its place, making sure that it's connected in the same column as my connection to power. Now I'm going to measure the current that breaks off and goes this way. Pull the resistor out, jumper wire in the exact same hole, connect the red, connect the black, there's a measurement. Now I would actually say that this knob is the best setting because you get two decimal places with your measurement. So you get 4.46 milliamps, there's your measurement. When you're done, put this back. Make sure it goes in the exact same column so that it's getting current. Pull the next one out. Put the jumper wire in. Take your measurement. This is where you would record that and also take a picture. And then put it back. Last resistor. This is how we break the circuit. So we're going to pull that resistor out. Put a wire in its place. And measure. So notice that when, the, when we break the circuit, okay, when we break it apart like this, what we're doing is we're redirecting the current through the multimeter and then into the resistor. That's what makes the multimeter now in series. Remember, we measure current in series. So um, when we break it right here and then connect the multimeter, now what's happening is we're redirecting current to go from the power supply to here, splits, splits, splits. This part that splits is going to come through this wire, your wire is connected to a multimeter, so now all that current is going into the multimeter and then coming back out of the black and then going through the resistor. That's how we're measuring the current through the resistor. We're redirecting the current to go through the multimeter. That's why you have to break the circuit so you can redirect that current to go through. When you're done, you put it back here. And if I wanted to measure a voltage, like the voltage across each resistor, I can put this on volts and then just hold it from either side. And all of these should have the same voltage, which is going to be about 12 volts because they're all in parallel with the voltage source. So they all have the same voltage as the source. That's how you would do lab four. And specifically, that's a quick um, tutorial on how we're going to break the circuit to measure current.